Rev up your engines. Today I'm gonna talk about why Toyota makes such reliable cars. What's the reasoning behind that? And I'll start out by telling you the truth. Nobody's sponsoring this. Toyota isn't sponsoring this. I've been a mechanic for 51 years. Look at my driveway. I've got a 1994 Celica, a 2007 Toyota Matrix, and a 2002 Lexus. And I bought all these vehicles used. Now why did I buy Toyota products? Lexus is a Toyota product. Let's not match names there. Well, precisely because I am a mechanic. Monday through Friday, I spend all my time fixing other people's cars. Do you really think Saturday and Sunday, I want to have to fix my own cars? I want the most reliable car so I don't have to work on the things. Even though I buy them used, I hardly ever have to do anything to them anyway. Now, why are the Toyota line reliable? Well, you have to understand, it's a different culture. I got a master's degree from the University of Illinois, and some of the stuff I studied was Asian business. Being a Japanese company, Toyota was always thinking towards the future. They're thinking sometimes even decades ahead. Where American manufacturers, hey, like most American corporations, especially ones that are publicly traded, they're worried about the stock price. So they're thinking about the quarterly report. Sometimes they're only thinking three months ahead, not three decades ahead. There's a real difference there between short-term and long-term profits too. Take Toyota. In the 70s and 80s, people accused them of dumping their small pickup trucks on the United States. They certainly didn't cost much back then. <laughs> they do today, but they didn't used to. They built themselves up a market of people who liked their little trucks, wanted a dependable little truck. So they sold a whole bunch of them. Yeah, they certainly didn't make that much money in the beginning selling those trucks, but they sure as heck do now. They built up a market by just improving their vehicles little bits at a time i remember when i was a young mechanic in the 60s everybody laughed at the japanese stuff and said oh those little rice burners ah those little puddle jumpers what good are they well sometimes being conservative pays off in the business world toyota never really made a v8 pickup truck until the tundra they were originally going to call it the t150 but Ford threatened to sue them, so they dropped off on that and decided to call it the Tundra. And they were worried that they weren't going to be able to sell them in large enough volume. They started making them in Indiana, where they used to make their forklift trucks. So they came in very conservative. They ended up selling all the ones they made, and they just started making more and more as people saw, wow, a reliable Japanese large pickup truck with a v8 engine now that's not their main market you know they're not going to be beating ford and selling v8 pickup trucks like the f-150 that's a real american thing and they've been building those f-150s for decades to perfecting them as time goes on but the tundra shows one basic thing about toyota they were conservative they started with okay we'll try v8 trucks now and a small amount then as they got popular they started making more and selling more. Even though big trucks weren't really their market. They were more into cars to get people around in. That's where they were making most of their profit. Get the Camrys and Corollas. They sold millions and millions of those things. And really when you looked at them, they weren't particularly good looking. Uh, they didn't ride all that well in the beginning, but they just didn't break down. And a lot of that has to do with their entire manufacturing setup. In Japan, they don't have the big labor versus management fight like in the united states where they're going at it tooth and nail in japan a good factory job was seen as a lifetime thing heck the people would go on summer vacations together and they would all be treated fine and there wasn't this oh we're the workers and the management is screwing us over it's a completely different scenario than it is in the united states and let's face it if you have a happy labor force and you keep incrementally making your vehicles better and better and perfecting them and then trying new things every once in a while but doing it conservatively your vehicles are probably gonna come off the line put together better than they are in a different scenario where the management and the workers are at each other all the time hey i've even had private conversations with businessmen in the united states working for large corporations and they said scotty we can't compete with the japanese on the same level because they just have a different society. They'd say the pressure for short-term profit was really high in the United States. And they're always trying to maximize that. 
whether it be lowering the quality of parts in cars to save money or paying the guys who built them less money. And if you think about it, both of those are not such a hot idea. You don't want lower quality parts and you don't want people who are building them getting paid less and less as time goes on. So if your main focus is not how can we make more profit by either cutting the quality of our products, paying the workers less? You're going to make better quality vehicles. That's just common sense. Now me, I admit it, I'm a cheapskate. All these Toyotas and Lexuses I bought, I bought them used. But since the Toyotas are so well made, you can buy one that's got some mileage on it and still drive it for years. I mean, I've had my own customers sometimes arguing with me and saying, oh, I'm happy with my Chrysler. I haven't had any problems with it. And then I say, well, how many miles do you have on it? And they say, well, we've got 30,000 miles on it. And I just laugh and say, hey, call me up when you got 100,000. Or if it makes it to 150, you spend a ton of money fixing it. And over the last three decades, Really, I haven't personally found anything that's more reliable for the money than the Toyota products are. And I just hope that they don't start following the Americans. But sadly, I see a little bit of that in the newer Toyotas. I see things breaking long before they used to. I've seen power door locks break on cars that were only two, three years old. I've seen water pumps go bad on vehicles that had maybe 40,000 miles on them. But let's hope that that's just a fluke and they don't follow down the line of planned obsolescence and start making cars that break down before their time. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.